What is good guys, back with more SPL, we have Trosco playing for the Wi-Fi Wolfpack versus Obliviate playing for the Scooters. Looking at the teams, I think it's going to be Scarf Land on both sides. On Trosco's side, we have a defensive clef to deal with Zygarde. On Obliviate's side, we have a Tangros to check or slash deal with Zygarde. So they can afford to run offensive Landris. Then looking at the Zemov users, it's most likely going to be Zemov Tornadoes on Trosco's side. Since he has a combination of clef Pharaoh, like he can go with sometimes Clef on a Dark Pots from Greninja and Pharaoh can also check Greninja, so he deals with Greninja relatively well, so it doesn't have to be a solve as he can afford to run a Zemov Tornado. On Oblivion's side, the Zemov user is either going to be the Greninja or the Tapu Koko. And yeah, looking at the, the hazard removal, I think it's going to be Scarf, Defog, Land on Oblivion's side and Rocks, Tran with Leftovers. And on Trosco's side, I assume it's going to be Defog on the Tornadoes. Rocks on either the Heatran or on the Ferrothorn, and the Clefable is most likely going to be a Command variant. The last move on Clef could be Knockoff. Depending on um, if he doesn't have knockoff on the Ferrothorn or on the Tornadoes, because you usually want at least one knockoff user. Um, removing items is just pretty nice. So, like, if the last move on Clef is not knockoff, it could also be something like T Bolt, some for Celesteela, that could be an option. And looking at the rest of his team, I think the Greninja is going to be a um, Battle Bond. If it spikes on the Ferrothorn and not spikes on Greninja, the last move could be U-turn, Ice Beam, or Extra Sensory. So yeah, if I'm Trosco here, I would just U-turn. I think Oblivion is either going to go to Tangros or to his own Landris. And if you U-turn, you just gain information. Um, obviously, the Tangros most likely has to be Assault Vest on Oblivion's side. So we do see that as 9%, so I'm pretty sure, as I thought, it's Offensive Lando on both sides. Now, Trosco can go into either Clefable or Ferrothorn here. I think Ferrothorn makes a lot of sense. And then he can get up either Rocks or Spikes, depending on what he has on the Ferro. Could also be double hazards, we will have to see that. And yeah, Ferrothon can come out here and get up hazards. You obviously don't want to go Greninja here, because if you go Greninja, then you have to take a Scarf U-turn. You don't want that. So Ferro can come out, uh, Ferro would force in the heat turn from Obliviate's side. And Greninja can switch in at least once on Obliviate's heat run. So Trosco is fine in that sense. As long as it's not Z Bloomdom Tran, and I'm pretty sure, um, looking at Team Preview, it's gonna be left East Tran and then Z move on either Coco or Greninja, like I said. Z move on Coco makes a bit more sense than probably Specs, Bellabon, Greninja on Oblivion side. And then the Galade is most likely SD, um, double stab and last slot either knockoff or ice punch, depending on if you're more worried about Mew or if you want ice punch to deal with Landris. So I think Oblivion is just gonna hard switch in the Heat Tran because he doesn't wanna take Iron Barbs. And Trosco is either gonna get up rocks or spikes, depending on what he has on his Ferro Thorn. Um, Heathers are gonna be pretty nice for Trosco because um, if, like, especially spikes hit um, five out of six members on Oblivion's side, and also rocks hit everything for neutral damage besides the Galade. So wearing down Oblivion's team is gonna be really nice for Trosco um, for to potentially get up the battle bond with Greninja later on. So now Trosco can um, is most likely gonna go to his own Greninja here as he got up rocks. Oblivion could um, probably get up his rocks here. Trosco is either going to go Greninja or Landris, but it's more likely that the Greninja is going to come out. And yeah, unless Oblivion has the Blue Moon on this trend, he should just go for rocks. Uh huh. So now, if this has spikes, he could go for spikes. If he doesn't have spikes, he should double into either Clefable or Landris because um, the Tangros is really obviously from Oblivion's side and if you don't have spikes on Greninja you cannot really do much to the Tangros because you only have our rocks. Later on if you can also get up spikes it's gonna be nice but yeah, since he doubled out into the Landris instead of getting up a spike um, this is obviously a good play because now you can U-turn on the Tangros and if he's uh, Z-move Tornadoes even if Tangros goes for knockoff it's gonna be completely fine. Uh, I'm expecting either a knockoff or a HPIC from the Tangros to come out and Trosco is obviously just gonna U-turn out. And yeah, since he did not go for spikes with his Greninja, I think his Ferrothorn is double hazards because he already thought that Ferrothorn had rocks. If you had spikes with Greninja you should have gone for it because there was no reason not to go for it. It was pretty obvious that Olivier was gonna go to the Tangrowth. But since he doubled out, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have it. Now he can just U-turn out into the Tornadoes, even if Knockoff knock comes out, if he Z-move, it's not gonna do anything. Even if HPIs comes out, since Tangrowth is just, like it doesn't do that much damage since it's um, it's a bulky Pokemon, like it doesn't dish out that much damage, unless the moves are like four times effective. But like Tornadoes um, can deal with that, because they also have Regenerator. So you should just U-turn out here. And then we will see if the Tornadoes comes out here. Um, we will also see from the damage if it's um, Offensive Torn or if it's a potential Max HP Torn. And yeah, that is 39. So I'm pretty sure that it's uh, Offensive Torn. I mean, there's still a slight question up. It could still be Life Orb, but I'm pretty sure Z-Move makes more sense. 
So he does double out in the Feral Zone, he predicted in the top of Coco to come out. So that tells us that he most likely does not have U-turn on the Tornadoes, because if he has U-turn, he would have gone for it. So now Trosco, if he has spikes, he can go for that. Um, Obliviat could sp uh, taunt here if he has that to prevent the spike from going up. I think that would be a really good play. Um, he could also just Volt Switch or U-turn out, depending on his set. If he doesn't, ha if he only has U-turn, then he can also Heart Switch out if he doesn't want to take Iron Bobs. And yeah, I think the Tornadoes is most likely uh, Hurricane, Defog, um, Knock Off, and the last move could either be Heat Wave or Super Power or Taunt. I'm pretty sure those are the, the move set. Since he didn't U-turn out on the on the Tangos, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have U-turn. So we do see that U-turn from Coco does 16%, and I think uh, Trosco is going to either Leech Shield or get up a Spike here. And yeah, that is most likely Z-move Coco because that U-turned it a lot. So I'm thinking it's Max Attack Coco, it's probably U-turn, um, Z Wild Charge, Roost, and then either Taunt or HP Ice. So now um, I believe it has a few options here. He could go for um, Knock Off or he could go for SD. Trosco could either go into his Clefable, or if he predicts the SD, he could also go hard into Landris and then U-turn out. Um, but I'm thinking more so that he's gonna go hard into Clefable. Obviously this Ferrothorn is pretty valuable because Obliviat has that control as the Landris. So even if Obliviat later in the game wants to defog, Trosco can then go into Ferrothorn and defog and get the hazards up again. Having um, a hazard setter that beats the defogger on the other side is really nice. And also this Ferrothorn puts in work uh, versus the Greninja versus the Coco versus the Landris. So there's no point in staying in here. Trosco wants this. So he's either gonna go Clef or Landris. Uh huh. And Obliviate. I'm actually I'm gonna expect him that he I think he wants to SD up here because Galate after Mega Wolves gets a Spadef boost and has pretty solid Spadef. So it can um tweet Kyo Clefable after SD within Headbutt. And Clefable's Moonblast doesn't Oko back. So we do see the Clef. Let's see if he goes for SD. We do see the SD. So now Zen Headbutt is pretty obvious. Um so Trosco could either stay in here, um, but then he loses 1v1. He could also go hard Greninja on his Zen Headbutt. The thing with hard Greninja on his Zen Headbutt is Specs Greninja does not Oko Galate from this range. Um, Dark Pulse, that's like, um, I think, 60 to 70. He does go Greninja on his head, but... So the only reason why you would make that play is if you want to bluff or if you have the Hydro Vortex. Because the Hydro Vortex is the only move that can kill Galate from here. Hydro Pump would do around 80-ish uh, Specs Pump and Dark Pulse like 60 to 70. So unless you're going for the Dark Pulse flinch... That play doesn't make much sense unless you have the Hydro Vortex, right? So Obliviate Galate can obviously put in work, it can beat um, Clefable 1v1 with SD, it can beat Ferrothorn. Um, like if it SDs on a switch to Clef, it can beat it. Obviously it cannot SD on Clef, then I would get 2-hit KO'd before it can 2-hit KO the Clef. But yeah, overall this Galate is pretty threatening, it's like... Trotska doesn't have good switches for it. So I think Obliviate wants to switch into um, Tangros here, to scout for the Hydro Vortex. Because he, we don't know yet confirmed if the Tornadus is Life Orb or Z-Move. So there's a slight chance that the Torn is the Z-Move user. To me, it's though pretty obvious that the, the Z-Move is on the Torn. It just makes more sense. Um, but I'm expecting, yeah. Like, if you just lose your Galatia to the z Hydro Vortex and give Trosco the Battle Bond form, that's really bad for Obliviate. So he's most likely. The logical play would be going hard into Tangros here, expecting the Hydro Vortex. So we do see the Tangos, let's see what Trosgo goes for. He does just go for Dark Pulse and does definitely Specs damage. So Trosgo was just going for the flinch there. Slash um, Dark Pulse would have put Galade in range most likely from Landris U-turn or um, from Landris Earthquake. Yeah, he was either try yeah, yeah, he was most likely just gonna try to bring the Galade in range. Uh, now obviously Oblivion has to go hard into Coco here. Trosco can either Dark Pulse or he can double into Ferrothorn. If he does double into Ferrothorn, anticipating the Coco, really nice play from Trosco. I'm loving how he's playing this. Tr second double into Ferrothorn already. So now Oblivion can taunt here or Roost. Because that Trosco's just gonna lay out more spikes, yeah. I think he should have taunted there if he has it. Maybe he doesn't have it. Um, I'm expecting Oblivion now to go into his Heatran. Uh, uh, Trosco is going to get up the third spike here most likely. His other potential play is Leech Seed. But yeah, these hazards are going to be putting in that work. Spikes hit five members. Uh, Rocks obviously hit everything for some chip. And he might be able to get up the Battle Bond soon. So yeah, I think Obliviate was fearing the, the Z Hydro Vortex from the Greninja. But Trosco was just trying to um, to get the Galade in range from, land, from a Lando attack. That's what I'm thinking at least. So now Trosco can go... Um, into his own Greninja, because, um, yeah, we do see that um, Obliviate's Landros is, uh, Heatran is leftovers, confirmed. 
So he cannot kill um, Trosko's Greninja. I think if Greninja was at 88, right? It only came in once after Rocks. Another potential play would be going Heatran. Because uh, he doesn't necessarily need Heatran. Tangos is um, pretty low. Up. Like, everything is going to be super low on Olivia's side just because of all these hazards. And even if he defogs, like I said, then Trosco can just go Pharaoh on defog and get up hazards again. So this is a double hazard Pharaoh Thorn. So it's either lacking Leech Seed or it's lacking an attacking move. I'm assuming it's going to lack um, Knock Off and the Knock Off is going to be on the Clef instead. So yeah, that's the teacher and let's see if he off powers or if he madness. He does off power. Okay, so yeah, that makes okay now that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense because um Trosco's Greninja can get out the battle bond. And yeah, he wants health on that mon because that mon is gonna destroy Obliviate. So yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Now if I'm Obliviate here I don't know if you wanna risk the speed tie. I was yeah, I was gonna say that crit might have mattered depending on Obliviate's threat. I was gonna say maybe he could have gone into Landris there on the Earth Power, but Trosco didn't lose much, even if he went into Landris on the Earth Power there. Because if Obliviate then defogs and the Heatran stays in from Trosco's side, then Obliviate is locked into defog. And um, if Trosco Magma Storms, then Obliviate's um, Landris would be dead. He would lose his speed control. Um, so I'm expecting um, the, the Greninja to come out here from Obliviate's side. And Trosco is most likely just gonna bring the Ferrothorn out. So I think, yeah, Obliviate could um, j probably go for a Dark Pulse or get up a Spike here. Obviously, Trosco, he doesn't need the Heatron anymore, but he doesn't want to stay in. He doesn't want to give Obliviate the Battleborn. I think Ferrothorn is just the safest play overall. Because if you go Clefable uh, on a potential Hydro Pump, that could be bad. Health on Clef is pretty valuable and, like, pretty nice for him. Um, it can still take a plus two and Headbutt from the Gallade. It also beats the, the Tangro, so like, I completely, yeah, I completely agree with going Feral Thorn. I think he does Hydro Pump. So yeah, Obliviate predicted him to um, probably go into Clefable, predicting, a, predicting him to predict the Dark Pulse, right? But I agree with the Feral Thorn play, because he can eat up the Dark Pulse, and if he goes for Pump, that's even better. So he's most likely gonna get up, a, go for Power Whip here. Yeah, so he gets really nice damage on the Galate, the Galate is now dead to Hazards. So obviously this is still nice, it can set up Hazards again if the Lander goes for Defog, it beats the Coco, and it can check the Greninja, so there's no point in staying in here with the Feral Thorn. Uh, so I'm expecting Trosco just to go into Clefable, or Sack his Heatran. I think Sacking, yeah, Sacking Heatran is also a completely fine play, because Heatran is at like, yeah, it almost dies to Rock, so let's see if he goes for SD. Nice play by Obliviate, but it doesn't matter because he can just kill the Heatran here and... Oh, he does have Drain Punch. Uh, now Trosco can go into his Scarf Landers and just click U-turn. And he's in a pretty fine position. Um, because if you go into Greninja here, then you have to click Water Shuri. Actually, no, no, no. He could also go Greninja. Greninja is faster. For a second, I forgot that Greninja is faster. Yeah, he could go Greninja here or he could go Lando. Both plays are fine. Um, what was I going to say? Since he had Drain Punch, if he stayed in earlier on Trosco's Greninja and if he did not get Dark Pulse flinched, he would have been able to get a lot of health back with Drain Punch. So that would have been potentially really good for Obliviate, but I do understand his play. Because if he um, lets Trosco hide with Vortex the Galate, and uh, at that point Obliviate didn't know if um, Trosco's Greninja was Specs or Z move, and he didn't know if the Torn was a Z move user or a Life Orb. And now he obviously knows that the Greninja is Specs. So yeah, Trosco can just go for Dark Pulse here. Obliviate might have to. I think he roosted with his Coco, so his Coco might have to come out here. But Trosco can does not have to predict at all, because even if the Coco comes out on a Dark Pulse, yes, you prevent the Ash form, but you still take all the hazards, you're forced to roost next turn, and then the turn you have to roost, Trosco gets a free switch into either Ferrothorn or Landris, most likely Ferrothorn, and then you can um, throw out more Power Whips, all the hazards are still up, you don't have a good switch in the Power Whip, especially with hazards up, so like, this is just completely in Trosco's favor, and I like how he played his Ferrothorn, he like doubled it in twice on the Coco to get up Hazards, and if Obliviate has Taunt, he maybe should have gone for Taunt, so he does expect the Dark Pulse and goes hard Coco to prevent the Ash, and he just clicks Surf and gets it off, wow. Um, yeah, this is this is no risk Trosco, so he runs Surf over Hydro Pump so he doesn't miss. Um, he does go on a Scarf Greninja knowing the Greninja is, uh, the Grin he goes Scarf Lando knowing that the Greninja is locked into Surf, my bad. And he's just going to U-turn here. So we do see the Clefable. Oh yeah, Defog, Defog, yeah. Defog to get up all the hazards. Good play, but it doesn't matter because if this is Carmine Clef, he can just Carmine up and win the game. Yeah, so he ran into Scarf Lando knowing that Trosco is not going to stay in and he can get up the Defog. Um, now he has to go for the Headbutt Flinches, but that, that, that does nothing. What? 
that, the latest that has to be a low roll like oh i know it's max defense clef but i thought it would do at least 44 so now he has to go for a hydro pump trosco's best play here is just moon blasting because if you spam soft boiled you risk getting crit by the greninja so just hard moon blasting to get rid of the greninja as the play you don't want to give um oblivion any opening because if he crits you you give him the opening to um that you will get reverse swept by balabon greninja but yeah, um, obviously he defogged expecting Trosco to switch out knowing that it's uh, Scarf Landreth. So he should just move with the above. There's a dead Landreth. And now this game is over. I think I believe he should just forfeit. He can go Landreth here, obviously. And now Trosco can either go to his Tornadus, to his own Lando, or to his Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn is probably the best play because um, if he goes for like Stone Edge or HPIs to hit the Flying Mons, then that's completely fine. And if he goes for Earthquake, then he can just switch out into his Flying Types the next turn, knowing that the Lando is locked in. So completely fine plays by Trosco. Now he can just click uh, Hurricane or Sky Strike as Changros comes out. He clicks Knockoff. Okay, we see it's Assault Vest. I'm surprised he didn't just click Hurricane. Now he's going to click the Z-Move Bop. Tangros is going to die. And obviously Oblivion cannot win. If he locks himself into Stone Edge, he gets walled by... Um, Ferrothorn by Clef, and if he goes for HPIs, also those Mons wall him, and if he goes for Earthquake, then the Tornadus walls him, so he just, just go Landreth on the HPIs, and now Trusco can just win this game with his Greninja, with Water Shuriken, so he does uh, sack off his Landro, goes into Greninja, takes Water Shuriken to win the game, that was a pretty cool game, um, I love how he played his Ferrothorn, I have to say it again, and yeah, like, he didn't really make, have many misplays. I think Obliviate could have um, played it a bit different. Um, he could have tried to taunt with the with the Coco. But overall, this was really well played by Trosco. So we're going to pause and look at the score real quick. And yeah, we do see here in these scooters, it was Wi-Fi Wolfpack. Um, now the score is a 7-3 and three, uh, for the Wolfpack. So the Wolfpack win the week. You can expect a lot of these lower tier games. Um, I myself did FE versus ABR, you guys uh, probably already saw that. But yeah, Lycans vs. Cindy, Felibin vs. Soulgazer, Eternally vs. Earth. All those games, I recorded them, and I'm gonna send them to my man Ultra Balls, the lower tier god. And yeah, I already said it myself, I've been enjoying lower tiers a lot. Like, I've been just spectating and speculating sets. I don't play these tiers myself, but it's just really fun. Um, like, what some of these lower mods can do, especially with new Z moves. Like, Z-Moves is one thing, like, a lot of people don't like Z-Moves, but I learned to love Z-Moves. Like, they just bring something new to the game, and especially in lower tiers, they can be so cool. Um, these lower tier mods, like, um, on Como, on Roserade, on um, the mod that is getting suspect as an RU, what's his name? The, the Steel uh, the steel Buck type that is getting suspect, the Durant, yeah. That mod is a Z-Move, like, those mods, uh, that was so interesting for me to watch those lower tiers with Z-Moves. And with all the move to the moves that are out in Ultra Sun Moon, it's just pretty cool. So yeah, I hope you guys stay tuned for that. It was a pretty cool game. Yeah, props to you, Trosco. I know you might be watching this. Shoutouts to you. Have a fantastic day, guys. Thank you for watching and peace out.